All right, this is also my first time here, and I also did make this up when I seen that this lightning board was pretty empty, so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so my name's Ryan. Um, I work for a company called Cover My Meds. They're based in Columbus. I work remotely, obviously. Um, and I want to talk about stop breaking migrations. So I wanted to talk about this because it's a little bit topical. How many of you have seen the, um, the GitHub post about the scripts to rule them all? And we see that this week. I think it was this week or last week. And I'm kind of. Mike raised his hand. You got one. Okay. Why, why, why is that cut off? Enhance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Does anyone know CSS? The CSS and the Chrome Inspector open. Chrome Inspector open? Yeah. It's because of the retina. Okay, well, I opened Chrome Inspector and it works. So. Nice. All right, so the, kind of what GitHub was uh, advocating was to. Uh, to have a set of scripts to in all of your applications so anyone knows how to bootstrap them, how to set it up, how to update. Um, the one I really want to talk about was kind of the, the setup. So anyone can come in, um, clone it from GitHub or whatever, clone it from wherever, and just run this uh, um, script setup. And it'll uh, install the database, set up all the migrations and everything, which is awesome because you can you know, like I said, go into any, any project and easily install them and everything. Um, and that's, that's cool, like I said, it's kind of topical. I guess maybe, not many people have read that here, but, um, um, and we use it a lot where I work at, where we, we clone new projects down, or even just, let's say I switch to a new branch and I don't want some migrations, I want to be able to you know, restart it fresh. So I run script bootstrap or script setup and it reinstalls everything, or re, you know, sets up the database and everything. Um, so the thing I, I wanted to actually talk about was breaking migrations when that happens. So you always want your migrations to be running from the very first migration to the end. So how many of you've, you know, been developing for a year or two years on, a, on you know, a, an app and all of a sudden just the migration stops working, but maybe you're not always running those migrations. So, and it's a pain, you have to figure out how to, how to get that migration working again. So I kind of want to talk about a strategy that we use, and obviously this is opinion, there's obviously different ways to attack this, but here's something that's been working very well for us. Um, so I kind of want to show just, a, like I said, I just created this application about 20 minutes ago, but uh, so let's just say we have a team, so I'm going to show a team's migration here, and um, there's name, um, timestamp, um, and is active uh, Boolean field here. Um, I want to show the team model. If I got to focus in here. Can you make it bigger? Need more. Big enough there? One more? One more. You big enhance. Enhance. <laughs> All right, so let me see where I got this. So here's my team model. It's just nothing bare simple. It just has one uh, scope on here, just active. So it'll return all the active teams. Um, I have a seeds file too. So I can get this to work. But... And it just creates a couple seeds up here. So it creates the, um, a team, one team just called the best team, another team called the worst team. And that, the worst team is, is inactive, obviously, because it's the worst. So I don't want that one. Um, so if I go in here and Let's see, let's just create this from a new. Oh, whoops, that one's small. <laughs> All right, create it. And I'm actually gonna run the migration, I can run setup or anything. So I run this one migration, so just create the, that team database there. Um, no issue there, everything works good. So let's say um, we wanna add a new migration, so um, I'm at a new migration. It's just going to generate a, a slug column on this team. So let's say we want to use this in our URL for something to easily get to teams. Um, so I go ahead and generate that migration. Um, creates it. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at it. So you can see here, just nothing's here. I haven't done anything with it. So I'm doing the risky thing of doing some live coding. All right, so we'll create this. So we'll just add a column. Let me know if you see any mistakes. And let's say in this migration, which we, you know, maybe you want to do a different one or another one, we say my team dot um, active. So we only want to update the active ones. I know this isn't the best thing, but let's just say this. Some this is kind of something we could do here. Um, so we say team dot update attributes. We'll we'll create the slug here. Team dot name underscore. So go ahead, remove it here. So 
So we got this migration, everything, everything should work fine. Um, it'll go ahead, add that slug there into the com, and then, act, and then update the attribute there. So we go ahead and run that. And if we open up the console, I got my shortcut. Nope, that's a test database. Well, I don't think you ran your seed. Your database is empty. Oh, did I forget to run the seed? Oh, thank you. That would make sense. <laughs> of course. <laughs> well, of course. Um. Thanks, <laughs> uh, So I'll go ahead. Actually, let me just delete it and we can rerun it again. Let me copy all this. Actually, I have it copied somewhere. Okay. Gone. Let's run the seed like I should have the first time. So go ahead, create a team, the best team, the worst team. Um, and then I should have this still in here. Paste it in, there we go. Let me add a, put S in here. Okay, so you can see it updated the team with uh, the slug, the best team there. Um, didn't put underscores in there, but um, that's probably what we wanted, but that doesn't matter now. Um, so yeah, everything worked good there. That's awesome. I mean, like I said, there's probably obviously some other issues here, but um, so, what, so what, what can break here now? Um, so let's say a developer comes in and a new developer, or even yourself just for getting down the road, um, says, you know what, this isn't, this is idiomatic rails here. This should have a uh, question mark at the end. Okay, yep, that's, that makes more sense there. And you go ahead, you update your specs, you update all your controllers, reviews, wherever this shows up. Cool, runs every, your, your test suite screen, um, everything runs good. What's going to happen when you run your migration now? So let's say someone runs that setup and they run this migration. This line five is going to fail here. So what's a, what's a good solution that we can do? We could always you know, add the where clause there. Um, but there's other things that can go on. Let's say, it's, you know, let's say that you drop a column or something. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that can go wrong here. Um, so one of the, the solutions that we've come, we found out that works a lot for us is to actually go in and create like a, uh, a migration team. So you create a team here and Set it equal to the actual teams one. So this this just you know kind of emulates what the team one would do, and you just kind of say, so you say what would it need here? So we say it needs a scope of active. So this is what it needs to be able to run this migration. Um, see, it all looks good. And then you actually say, instead of using team, which can change at any point, someone can change it, it doesn't matter where you are in your migration um, as it's running, um, that, that, that couldn't be what you need. You, say, you set this to migration team instead of team. So now this is actually the state that the database, database is in at the point and also your model. So that's the one you want to use instead of what it could ever, you know, what it could be in the future. So now if I go ahead and run this, so let me drop it. Actually, let me run it without it just so that it breaks. Okay, so now if I say b db migrate, uh, let me make sure that I wrote it. It's going to complain. It's going to say active was an inactive, isn't actually work there. You can see undefined method active. So now if I go into 
to here, say I want this to be migration team, this is the state, this one actually has the active scope, doesn't care what the, what the actual team is. So now if I say B right, DB migrate on that, adds it fine. So this is a way of making sure that you know your your, your migrations will always work. For the moment, you know, definitely will work in the past, depending on how, however you change your model. So that's kind of just how I want to say a strategy that's worked really well for us, and we haven't had too many uh, face palming, you know, trying to figure out why migrations are breaking, and you can just set up a new app real easily. I mean, it's it's used pretty rarely. Like I said, it's it's but it's it's mostly just whatever you're going to use to run your migration. Then you probably want it in that migration model right there. Um, you wouldn't want to add extra stuff. You wouldn't want to like copy and paste your whole model in there. You just want what is needed. I mean, we've we have some that can get a little more complicated. Maybe we need one or two, you know, maybe we need to have an association in there, and the association needs to be added to. So we say um, has many. Um, so let's say the team has users. So it has many users, and then we also create a migration user model. And then we, you know, we say class name equals migration user instead of letting Rails assume it's the user model. How does this work if you have a long chain of migrations and you need to redefine the model over and over again? Won't they, the redefinitions of migration team clobber each other? Well, you'd probably want to. Yeah, I, that would definitely could happen, but I'd say you probably, um, I guess we haven't run into that too much. I haven't seen it happen, which I know we probably, that's the thing is I wonder if we have redefined it. But like I said, we, I run this. I run. I, I run a setup every single day, and we haven't seen it too much. But we probably you want some kind of uh, maybe add the, the migration number to it or some something that would kind of keep it unique. Emily, what's your suggestion? Uh, yeah, the, the way you've got it set up there, you're actually defining the migration team class inside of your migration class. Oh yeah. So. so mm -hmm, yeah. That that's. No yep. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, like I said, as I said, that's another strategy. With, with what I was kind of mentioning, you could do that too. Um, this this kind of keeps you know Rails. You can use all the Rails methods without having to use SQL. We actually are going into where our team is going to is we have to use raw SQL. So we actually run Ruby migrations and copy and record the SQL and then record that and then send that to our DBA, <laughs> which that's not ideal, but that's that's kind of we're trying to find a good process from there. <laughs> well, I mean, I've run into this exact thing, and like, mm -hmm. the conclusion I came to personally was that. Class names should not be involved in your migration. So, like migrations, in my opinion, are a concern of the database, mm -hmm. and the Ruby class names are a concern of like your application yeah. And logic. So I just, I mean, yeah, and then, like I said, this is kind of a an in between for us right now because yeah. we're having, like I said, we're the DBA is handling all the migrations now, but we kind of just want a way to say, okay, start up our script really easily. You know, yeah. obviously we could write everything there, but we have a lot of. It's like we have new new developers to junior to senior, so it's this, you know. This is what everyone knows how to write these migrations. So, yeah. No more? Uh, I've run into a problem where you end up with just like hundreds or maybe a hundred or more migrations. And you, you, um, there's a temptation to just kind of dump it into a schema like RB mm -hmm. or a, a SQL um, file. But then what I'm, I'm seeing is then I have like 60,000 lines of SQL. Or, <laughs> yeah. you, you know what I mean? And, uh, with everything else in the Rails application being so neatly um, organized, um, I'm, I'm finding myself wishing that there was also a nice way to organize uh, the schema. I was wondering if you might have any suggestions for that. You know, I wish I wish I could find you know a better way. That's the thing. That's what we're struggling with. That where where I'm at right now is just how to organize these because it's uh, we same thing. We have hundreds that, are, that run, and that's in one single application that we have hundreds of running. So. Um, I mean, it's, like I said, this is just one way to, there's still hundreds of them, but they're not breaking. So that's, I mean, that's a step in the right direction. So uh, do you guys need to run all the migrations, or can you just uh, start up your development database um, from uh, iustructure.sql, but uh, whatever the Ruby equivalent is of just like load your schema or whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 and we do a lot of, I mean, that's, that's kind of what I'd prefer to do, but there's um, this is it, it kind of what I keep going back to. It's kind of intermediate step where we had a lot of a lot of things that were what I was showing right there. Where that's probably not the best practice to put like your to slug your team in the migration there or something. We have like things where we're loading like 
things from external source in our migration and stuff instead of our and instead of our db seed file so it's and it's things that we can't go back and do so this like i said this is kind of just a a good strategy for handling some of those things in there because i know i mean everyone's probably done it at some point where they've you know let's let's just kind of somehow seed a migration after we change a column or something like that so what you're looking for is basically like a migration rollup tool is that kind of what i'm hearing mm -hmm. I mean, we're, I, there may be one that exists. We haven't found. I mean, that's the things we we had to go from SQL Server to Postgres, which we're on Postgres now, and it's we're uh, we're trying we're writing some we're trying to write some of our own tooling. We don't have any boring tooling, unfortunately, right now for the, some of the stuff they want to do. <laughs> yeah. That's a good idea. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the approach I've been Okay. And I also try to stick to SQL. Yeah, yeah. That's just my personal. Yep. <laughs> I said we're, we're going there, so, <laughs> yeah. This is a thing we've done many times. We, about every 12 to 18 months, we declare migration bankruptcy on our big app. Mm -hmm. And we'll have several hundred to many hundred migrations that all get rolled up. We take the mm -hmm. schema and make that migration one. You have to do work on the migration numbers. You have to make sure that that gets seeded, that the migration numbers are correct, and you delete all the old stuff and you all kind of junk. And it turns out um, it's not worth writing a tool to do. Because if you're doing it that often, you're doing something else wrong. And you shouldn't have to do it that often. And it's not worth writing, spending the time to write the tool because it takes you about two, three hours, and it's done. Two, three hours every year and a half, don't bother mm -hmm. it. It's not worth it. Yeah, I like that approach. That's something I actually could probably gonna bring up because that's that's probably a good step to actually take that and make that a habit. Yeah. If if you do that, you're essentially throwing away all the data migration. So essentially, the mm -hmm. the ones that could be the issue. Schema, mm -hmm. you're throwing away all the data migration. If you don't care about that, unless you have backups you might want to restore from that are from an older migration. You have to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> that's what Git is for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you have to do that with store, you're doing something else wrong. Right. <laughs> Any more? All right, thank you.